So when we look at the verses in 1 Corinthians 12, 25, the focus here is that, that there should be no schism or schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And when we look at what Paul is, is highlighting to us, it is quite clear that God's purpose in composing the body is that the seemingly lesser members are given equal honor. And the reason for that is so that there may be no division in the body. Because so often in life, I mean, you see it even as parents with, with children in terms of, I think one of the first words kids learn, and no one teaches them this year, is mine. It's mine. You know, you get them to play with toys and another child goes there to take it. And what do they say? Mine. And you ask yourself a question, where did they learn that from? But it's within the human nature. It is within the human psyche that even as that little child, they learn mine. And as parents, you know, we got to teach them the whole thing about uh, caring or sharing is caring until it's their own that they have to share. And then he's like, no, we don't want to do that. But this is also something from a, from a psychological point of view. You look at it and there's a book that I've read by Robert Fulgham. Pretty much the title says, everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten. And one of the principles that he promotes there are those little basic truths and principles that you teach in kindergarten, which is share your toys, play nicely in the sand pit, don't fight, don't bite, don't pull and don't punch and all of that. And the reality is that as adults, we just kindergarten kids grown up, but we still have the kindergarten tendencies to fight, to pull, it's mine, I hope we don't bite, but this is where it's about going back to basics in any aspect of life. And I shared with you my background in, in sports coaching. And if a, if a cricketer, if a batsman has lost his form, we, what we do is we bring him into the nets and we get him to work on not his attack, but his defense, the basics, forward defense, backward defense. Get that right. Because when you start to get bat on ball, it builds confidence. Similarly with a bowler. If a bowler is not bowling well, it's back to the bread and butter, line and length. Line and length, basics, getting the ball in the right areas. And similar for us as Christians. You know, sometimes we feel that we've grown up so much, we've been Christians for so long, that we have to be in a place where there is all of this huge, big theological stuff that we go through, that we forget the basics of what God has called us to do. And the basics are there for us to honor God. Now, with this picture here, I deliberately put the whole image of the evolution going down. Because if you believe in that, you are going down. You're going very down. Very hot place you can end up in. And God wants us to remember that in his kingdom, that there is this basics. Play nicely. Love each other. You know, and that's what we're going to find when I look at the end. I'm going to share a very famous parable at the end. So don't go anywhere. Stay here. And, and we'll get to that. But the New Living Translation, I like what they say. The New Living Translation doesn't focus on the negative about the division. But in the red there, the New Living Translation looks at that word that there should be no schism and translates it from the original Greek. This makes for harmony among the members. And if you remember the word harmony, what picture comes to mind? The picture of the orchestra and the harmony the melody, the coming together of all the instruments in the body or actually in that orchestra to play together, that there's that harmony. And for us as a church, when we come together and we're singing from the same hymn sheet, from the Bible, from God's word, there is that harmony. So looking a little bit more into that verse, we learn that when Paul is speaking to us, but that the members should have the same care for one another, it is important to remember that one member of the church, one member of the church is not more important than, the, uh, than another member. And we've been speaking about that, not allowing the hierarchy and that sort of uh, dictatorship to come through, which we've looked at is so prominent in the worldly systems of the caste and the class and, and the whole evolutionary uh, ideas that there's the survival of the fittest. And that's nonsense. 
Because you'll see what happens when you subscribe to those ungodly theories, the survival of the fittest that, you know, you got to dominate. I mean, Ron spoke about it in his talk about how men feel that it's too hard for them to admit that they need help. And coming from South Africa, you know, there's a very famous saying that young boys are taught that is totally wrong. And the phrase is cowboys don't cry. Am I right, Victor? Am I right? Cowboys don't cry. And this is coming from a supposedly Christian culture, a Christian society. And then I asked the men, I said, that's what you are taught when you're growing up. Cowboys don't cry. But what's the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. So for our example of a man, for our example of the man, we would say Jesus was the man. And if the man wept, what does it tell us? It tells us that it is okay. It is okay to come to that place where you realize you don't have all the answers. It is okay to come to that place where you realize, I don't know what to do. But today's society brings a schism that to be the man means that, or the woman, that you got to have all the answers. You got to have everything together. You got to be onto it. And that is a recipe for disaster. And this is why you find that the pride element rises up. And we become so prideful because the world teaches us that you got to be strong. You got to stand up. And even not just men, but women as well. I mean, I was shocked and appalled when I was taking the, the train a few years ago in New South Wales, not WA, but New South Wales. And I made the mistake, I made the mistake, air quotes, of offering my seat to, a, to an older lady. And boy, oh boy, did I walk into that one. What are you trying to say? That I'm not good enough because I'm not strong enough because I'm a woman? Me? And she goes, yeah, I don't need your seat. Thank you very much. And then recently, I was taking the train down uh, two weeks ago, and this was WA, so New South Wales people, Eddie and Lois, don't feel bad, because in WA, I had learned my lesson. So I get onto the train, and in my luck, it's the Dockers game. The Dockers game just finished last, no, last week. Yeah, the Dockers game just finished at about five o'clock, because Jolie and I had gone off uh, for a staycation for our anniversary. And coming in, we stopped at Perth Stadium. So I took the train at Victoria Park, and the next stop, or the next few stops was Perth Stadium. And, I, and I, I had the train all for myself until we got to Perth Stadium. And the doors opened and all these guys in purple just started to rush in. And I, and I sat there and the guy came and sat next to me and the, 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 the train was quite full, heading into Perth Central. And he made the mistake. He made the mistake. There was a, I, I learned not to say elderly lady because someone said to me, that's not old. She was in the late 60s. And... And she was standing there and she was having a talk. And this guy, this, can I say sucker? He goes, hi, would you like to have my seat? And I was like, okay, here we go. And right on cue, she looks at him. Do I look like I need your seat? I am perfectly fine, okay. And then I mentioned to him, I said, don't feel bad. It happened to me a few years ago. But what is it about us? This independence that I am the man, that I am the woman, I don't need help. And this is something I spoke about a few weeks ago, that it's okay to ask for help. It does not make you lesser or more of a person to say, I need help. And that's one of the first things you learn you know, in terms of the difference between amateur sport and professional sport. I had to learn that. I'll take cricket, for example. That in cricket, when you get hit with the ball as a batsman, it's okay to rub it. Because in the amateur setup, it's like, oh, no, i got a soldier on. If you get a hit in the ribs as well, uh, even though you can't breathe, like, oh, I can't show the batsman I'm weak. You know, uh. And it's also in soccer as well. You get injured and you want a soldier on. But the professional, the professional learns and knows, you know what, if I get hit, I'm going to go down. I need to get the treatment. Because I don't want to face the next ball if I'm not well, if I'm not in a good space. I don't want to carry on running because I can do more harm to my body if I'm injured and I don't get the treatment. And similarly for us, you know, figuratively, and, and in life, if we need help, put your hand up. And that's why there's ministries and organizations like the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and, and the church as well. It will not harm you. It will help you to ask for help. And, and this is where, in what I'm trying to say here, that it's okay as a body of Christ to say you need help. 
It doesn't make you lesser or, or worse or anything of that sort there. So Paul is going on to highlight again that there's no favoritism. There's no partiality. It doesn't mean that because you are of a certain, uh, you live in a certain area, uh, your father is, or your mother is so-and-so, that you'll be treated uh, differently or, or more uh, special. One of the ways we can care for and serve each other is to listen. And that's important. And that's what the whole poll analogy is that we put up there. For those of you that are not aware, that's what we spoke about. Sometimes, you know, to listen to someone is to be a pole, just so that they can lean on. A person of love and encouragement, a person of listening and what is the other one? We, we, did, we went through that in the camp, some of the acronyms for pole. But we've got to understand that when we don't have that care for one another, when we don't have that ability to understand that people need help, we can lose the plot. And this is what Paul is highlighting in the next verse, that he wants us to be that Paul. He wants us to be that person that just listens. You don't have to do anything. We call it a fly on the, on the wall, just to be there, just to... But more than that, we want to be a, a Paul because we want people to know that we care. And sometimes people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We don't want to go there and give them a lecture and stuff like that there, but we just want to be there to support them. So when we look at the next verse, Paul is, is driving home the point again of understanding that if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. And it's that old saying, a sorrow shared is a sorrow halved. A joy shared is a joy doubled. And that's what it's about. It's about understanding that we, we celebrate the wins, but we also celebrate the losses, the times where people are in challenge, when people are, are in strife. So Paul is, again, to break it down, the experiences of one part of the body is shared by all the members. Sufferings and joy are to be shared among the body. When a church demonstrates mutual care and concern, it can heal and or prevent divisions. And that's important. That's where Paul is trying to say that in order to prevent divisions, in order to prevent schisms and schisms, we need to be able to care for one another. We need to be able to have that concern. And I spoke about it. It's not just for us as a church, but when someone like Ron comes up and speaks about the Red Cross, how does it make you feel knowing that a few streets, a few hundred meters from where you are enjoying your sleep and enjoying a hot meal, there's people that are going without. And this is not a guilt trip. But I'm just saying again, bringing it, line, bringing it in line with Matthew 25, when Jesus says, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was without clothing, when I was in prison, you didn't visit me. At a hospital, you didn't visit me. That sort of thing. You know, he's driving home the point that we got to consider the needs of others. And that's the golden rule of life. What is the golden rule of life? Do unto? Oh my goodness, I got to send you for detention. This is... For detention. Okay, I'm going to give you lines as well. Become known oh. as. And he says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that is so, so practical. 